Well, first of all, congratulations, Dr. Shahin, for the approval of your vaccine in the European Union. What does this step mean for ending the pandemic? This is a very important step. So this is the first approved, approved vaccine in Europe. It means that we now can start vaccination of the, of the European population. We got also a, an approval in Switzerland. And, uh, and the starting of the vaccination, we expect, of course, that we have a benefit for the vaccinated people. Uh, and we expect that we can help to reduce the hospitalization, particularly of the elderly people, in the next months. Uh, we expect that if additional vaccine suppliers and companies go, uh, get approvals, uh, and that we will be able, until end of summer, to reach sufficient vaccine doses and sufficient uh, immunity rate in the in the range of 60 to 70 percent, which could help us to control the pandemic before next win winter in 2021. OK, we've seen news of this faster spreading variant, the mutation of the virus. From what you know, is your vaccine effective against this variant? We don't know so far. Uh, uh, because uh, we did not yet test. Uh, we, will, uh, we will, in the next two weeks, we will uh, build this new virus variant, the piece of this va virus variant, and uh, evaluate whether immune responses against our vaccines uh, are able to inactivate that. Scientifically, the likelihood is high that this is the case, because even though this new variant has multiple mutations, only 1% of this protein is changed. Yeah. That means 99% is still the same. And we know that our immune response or the immune response that is induced by our vaccine is, is attacking this protein on multiple sites so that the likelihood is, is high and that the vaccines will still work. But we will get the results in two, two weeks and then we can be sure. Now, if you find out that you will have to develop a new vaccine against this mutated virus. How long would the development of such a vaccine take you? So technically we can produce a, a new vaccine in, 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 in about six weeks. But the development would most likely take longer because we, we would have to show for this new vaccine uh, against this new var variant that induces immune responses. And, and we, had, we have to discuss with the authorities whether they would accept such a change of the, of the, of the vaccine. And this is, this is scientific and medical, me medical disca discussion. But I am, I, am, I am confident that if there is a need for a change, that the technology that we are using, the messenger RNA technology, could deliver the change. What about distribution? Uh, much has been made of the challenges of distribution or, or much has been made of uh, the challenges of distributing your vaccine given the ultra low temperatures necessary. Do you anticipate any complications as you begin shipping the vaccine now into the European Union? No, not at all. So this ultra cold temperatures are nothing new. So uh, dry ice transportation is, is known for more than 50 years. It's not cutting edge. It's just a box with dry ice. And there are many dry ice providers, uh, which, uh, which helps us uh, to, to, uh, to get this done. The, the boxes are transported to the sites. And then, as, uh, as seen in the TV, the people can take the medical, uh, me uh, medical uh, personnel can take out the, the boxes and put it into the fridge. And then it's stable for five days. Days. And we know that if the vaccine arrives, there's a, there's a strong interest uh, to, to, uh, to start vaccination and to, to finish, finish the virus, so that this is no real challenge. Now, uh, industrialized countries like Germany have the vaccine. Poorer countries don't have that easy access to uh, a vaccine. Isn't that unjust? No, I don't think that is that, that is true. If you if you see see what happened in the last last weeks, we have we have now an approval in more than forty countries, including uh, uh, emerging emerging uh, countries, economically emerging countries like like Mexico or or, or uh, states in uh, South America. So we are really interested to make our vaccines globally available, yeah? and we are working with authorities worldwide to ensure that they can get access uh, to our vaccine. Allow me a 
personal questions. I I know that you don't particularly that you're not particularly fond of answering personal questions. But you and your wife, Dr. Tuich, you, you play such a central role in the development of the virus. How does this feel? Uh, it um, it feels, of course, we are extremely focused. This is this is what we are doing since more than 20 years. It is it is our research. It is it is the way how we deal with scientific and medical challenges. And of course, we know that that uh, that there is a lot of attention. Yeah, uh, what, what we do, but we don't see it personal. We see really that our work is important. We are not alone. We are working together with a world-class team here in Mainz. We are working together with a world-class partner in the United States. We have so much support by many, many other companies that we don't feel alone uh, so that we can really, really uh, um, uh, take care of this big challenge together as a team. And you both are scientific superheroes. Yeah, we are. We are scientists. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, superhero just means that 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 the science that we did is important. But we were not alone in developing the science. So I think the whole scientific community is a superhero. Yeah, and and it should be really regarded not as a single event, but investment into research by m so many different scientists who had contributed until this is this is accomplished. I have heard that you yourself have not taken the uh, the vaccine yet. Why not? So I am I am uh, legally not allowed to take the vaccine at the moment. We of course consider uh, to make that possible. It is more important for us that our co-workers and partners uh, get vaccinated. So we our goal is to produce more than 1.3 billion doses in in 2021, and and that can only be done if we can really continue to work 24/7 without any interruption. And we need to ensure that in. Uh, that we protect the, the co-workers and our team members from, from COVID-19 COVID infection because that would mean interruption and delay uh, and waste of vaccine doses. And therefore, we consider to make an extra batch uh, uh, independent from the, from the European con contingent uh, available to, to, to collaboration partners who are supporting us and to our team members. But I understand why. Why are you not legally allowed to take the vaccine? Because you know that uh, that there is there is a pri priority. The vaccine is not allowed uh, uh, to, to 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 be taken outside of this priority list. And what is also important, we were even not allowed to participate in clinical trials because because uh, because per law. Uh, it is it is not possible to include company people yeah, into such trials, which is really fine. But now we have to deal with the more important important challenge that we need to ensure functionality of our whole company, of our teams, and therefore this is needed. And and I think we will find a, a legal and uh, and fair solution for that. Dr. Shahin, many thanks.